Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. This is the first video in the KQL Intermediate Series. In today's session, we'll give an overview of the Intermediate Series, we'll talk about data types in KQL, and we'll learn about empty and null values. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. Welcome to the KQL Intermediate Series. If you're new to KQL, we recommend reviewing the Beginner Series playlist. And if you want to see where your skill set's at, you can take the two-part End of the Beginner Series quiz sessions to see how you do. Our goal for the Intermediate Series is to continue to build on the topics of the Beginner Series, plus add these new topics. The Intermediate Series focuses on joining two or more data sets, as well as summarizing information and presenting it in charts and graphs. In the Advanced Series, we'll focus more on parsing data, making conditional branches, and using advanced functions. The first lesson in the Intermediate Series is understanding data types. We'll be using a free log analytics demo environment to practice our queries. If you need instructions on accessing this free environment, refer to video 7 of the Beginner Series. In the Beginner Series, we work with strings, numbers, and date-time data types. Each field has a data type assigned to it in the schema. If we use getSchema, it identifies the default data type of each field. Even though the data type is defined in the schema, we have the ability to change data types if we need to. There are limitations on what you can do with some data types, while other data types are optimized to reduce processing power or reduce size. In addition, some data types have additional commands that can only be used with that data type. Here's a list of the KQL data types. The bool data type is short for boolean, which refers to a field that either has a true, false, or null value. Here's an example of a bool data type and how it looks in a data set. You can use the double equals, the not equals to, and and or operators with Boolean data types. You may want to write a query that has a trigger for a yes no condition, and Boolean data types are perfect for this. Later in this series, we'll show some use cases and queries using Boolean data types. The date time data type represents an instance of time. Although it's normally expressed as a date followed by a time, it could be just the date or just the time. Keep in mind that Kusto's default is to display in UTC. So if you need this in a specific time zone, it should be changed. If you want to review date time options in depth, refer to lesson nine of the beginner series. The decimal data type is a 128 bit length decimal number. While this is an available data type to use, it's more common to see decimals used in a real data type. The decimal data type is more precise in math equations, but it's slower in processing time. So it may be a better option when precision is more important and in special use cases. The dynamic data type is unique and that it can take on any of the scalar data types such as bool, int, long, real, or strings. JavaScript object notation or JSONs, which are usually in key value pairs, are often represented as string data types and to more easily manipulate the contents, we can change them to dynamic data types. Sometimes they're stored in the database and they're already in dynamic data types. So it's best to look at the data type before manipulating these type of objects. If you have a property bag of items that contains different data types inside, you can also select a dynamic data type. Dynamic data types take additional resources and have restrictions where some operators will not function with that data type. So choosing to switch to dynamic has pros and cons. In the advanced series, we'll focus heavily on manipulating dynamic data. In this example, we see the device detail field of the sign in logs table, and it has key value pairs. If we expand any record, it's easier to see the matching key value pairs. We can see that some information on the device was removed before it was stored in the database for security reasons. The GUID data type isn't super common in KQL, but it represents a globally unique identifier, represented like this. You may see GUIDs simply represented as a string data type. When we think of numbers, they can come in many forms. We already talked about the decimal data type. Another data type is for whole numbers, and it's an int, which is short for integer. 
The int data type is 32 bits in size and it represents a whole number and doesn't contain decimals. For larger whole numbers, you can use a long data type, which is 64 bits in size. While you'll see long data types more often than GUID data types, they're still not used that much unless there's a specialty use case that requires them. Real data types are also 64 bits in size, but they allow for a decimal point and are more commonly used over a decimal type. The most common data type is the string. It can represent a sequence of Unicode characters. Individual characters in the strings can be letters, numbers, and symbols. There are some special characters that require an additional escape character to be able to use it in the string. As an example, if you want to place a double quote inside of a string and make it part of the string, you can use a slash in this way as an escape character. In this example, we want to print the phrase, KQL is very intuitive with an exclamation point, but we want the intuitive to be in quotes. Normally the quotes would mark the end of the string, but if we use a slash as an escape character before each quote in the string, then the entire sequence of words and characters to include the quotes are part of the string literal. Time span data types measure the length of time between two time markers and can be measured in days, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, microseconds, or nanoseconds. If you have two independent date times and you want to see the difference from the start to the finish date time, you can use a time span. In this example, we're taking the created date time field and subtracting it from the time generated field to see what the difference is. When we look at the schema, we can see that it automatically makes the data type time span. Sometimes the field is blank and it contains no visible data. If the data type is a string, then the field is considered empty. If the data type is anything other than a string, it's considered null. In this example, we're using is null. We can also use is not null. This is useful if you want to filter your data set to remove null values in particular fields or to have a data set that only includes null values. In this example, we can see the field contains a string data type. We're using is empty to provide a Boolean true false statement about whether the value of the string is empty or not. We also wanted to touch a little more on JavaScript object notations or JSONs. JSONs are semi-structured data that are in key value pairs and are a common way to transfer data over a network between a server and web application. We often see these in our data sets with curly braces. Inside there are key value pairs with colons in between and commas separating them. If there are keys with values in the data set, then why not just put them in their own fields? It might be that in a data set of 1000 items, a certain key may only have two values and the rest are empty. In this case, if each key had its own field in the data set, it would be too wide to be usable or have too many empty fields to be useful. Also, some JSONs contain large quantities of information, so it's a way to make the overall data set more user-friendly. And if the contents need to be manipulated or expanded, KQL provides a way to do that. We'll focus more on parsing of data in the advanced series, but we wanted to touch on that concept initially in the intermediate series for foundational knowledge building. Casting is a term used when we change from one data type to another. In this example, I have two integers, which are whole numbers. I can change these to string data types by using toString. This is an example of casting to change the data type. When they were both integers, I could perform math problems on the two items. Now that they're strings, if we try to perform a math problem, we don't get a mathematical answer. As you can see, you may have some use cases that will provide value by changing data types, but you can also lose some functionality and the ability to use some operators after the change. We'll have many practical examples of casting in both the intermediate and advanced series. For this week's homework assignment, using the log analytics demo environment and the perf table, First, identify the data set of the counter value field, then cast the data type to a string. After casting, verify the change using get schema. If you need access to a free log analytics demo environment, 
refer to session seven of the beginner series. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.